well, uh, this episode of Finno Greek Machining is uh, dedicated uh, to gear cutting. Well, I have a perfect example uh, for a gear uh, that has a little bit uh, strange uh, teeth count and uh, which has uh, most of the uh, problems uh, associated with uh, uh, gear cuttings, uh, gear cutting in uh, in the old uh, school way. Uh, so what we are going to do today is to uh, go through the whole thing about gear cutters, how to set them uh, set them up, how to choose the correct uh, uh, cutters, uh, what is the cutting depth uh, modules, and uh, whatever there is. So uh, well. Uh, <laughs> There is a lot of theory in this uh, uh, episode, so if you don't like to uh, uh, look into theory, there is also massing, yes. Uh, just uh, use this um, uh, uh, list of uh, uh, subsections, uh, the sections list, and uh, you can find uh, places where the massing is happening. Uh, well. But if you are interested uh, in uh, gear cutting, how to do this uh, with your, let's say you have a, a milling machine and you have just a birch haste uh, a dividing head and uh, this is a little bit odd for you, this whole thing. I try to be really, really thorough uh, in this episode so that you uh, might get an idea uh, how to deal with these things. So, let's start um, with uh, the dividing head first. This here uh, is my Chinese uh, knockout of the brown and sarpe size zero uh, dividing head. It's a rotating platform. So, uh, I have now disconnected uh, the so-called warm. <laughs> so, there is a shaft uh, going uh, through, through, and uh, there are uh, three bearings there. First of all, at the chuck end, uh, there is a tapered uh, roll bearing which uh, tolerates pushing this chuck uh, towards uh, the dividing at this direction. Okay. And then we have a uh, uh, normal sliding pushing bearing about about here inside there and then furthermore we have here at the end there is a, hmm, a, what is this uh, it's a disc with uh, pins uh, well it's a bearing there well uh, about the forces uh, that this tolerates it does not tolerate it does not tolerate pulling uh, this out from here. So if you are cutting like this direction, which is pulling your workpiece, you, sh you really should uh, support it with tailstock here. Yeah, uh, it, uh, this uh, tiny bearing at the end uh, doesn't uh, like uh, pulling uh, too much. It's only for preloading the, uh, the big bearing here. Instead, pushing it uh, tolerates uh, like uh, anything else. It uh, <laughs> it can be pushed uh, really hard, and uh, well, that's okay. Well, and then uh, this uh, rotating platform can be tilted. Uh, as you can see, we have here two locking bolts which go to this side, uh, like here, here, and here. And when you tighten these, uh, it will lock this in place. When you loosen these, it ca you can tilt it uh, whichever way, 90 degrees, so that it uh, points directly up, for example. That about the platform. Uh, then, uh, well, uh, let's go into uh, uh, the indexing methods. By indexing, I mean that you can... Uh, uh, have this rotation uh, be locked on a, a known place or divided by a known number of uh, steps. Well, um, 
Uh, this uh, device has uh, three of them, <laughs> actually three. The first and most inaccurate one is uh, the graduation here uh, on the rim of this uh, direct uh, indexing plate. You can use that uh, and you can get uh, down to one degree accuracy with that one. Then the next one is uh, associated with this, uh, this lever here. Uh, when you rotate this, it locks in a place. This is called direct indexing. And uh, there, there are holes here in the back. And then we have, if you can see, there is a pin going. A pin? <laughs> Uh, wrong lever, uh, been going into and it, it enters the holes and uh, it locks uh, the uh, chuck into a known place. And this is um, uh, the number of holes is 24, so uh, there will be uh, um, every 50, 15 degree you can uh, index it directly in 15 degree intervals. And this is actually the most accurate uh, uh, way this uh, device can do. Uh, it really is. Okay. Well, then uh, uh, the third method is associated with uh, this here. Uh, my warm gear has been disconnected. Uh, let's see what I mean by warm gear. I can take it out, actually. Okay. Well, ah, oh, okay. Then we have a washer like this. And now it should come out. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, there is a worm like this inside there. And uh, this one, uh, you should keep it lubricated. Yeah. Uh, well, as you can see, I have a lot of lubrication here. So let's put it back where it belongs. So now, now uh, when it's in this position, this can be freely rotated. Then you can use the either the graduation indexing or the direct indexing. But when you connect the warm like this then you are going to use indirect indexing. And this is uh, where this uh, thing shines. Hmm. Uh, when you crank this, you can see that uh, the chuck is rotating. So there is a certain uh, rotation ratio here. For every turn of uh, the chuck, full turn, this has to be rotated 40 times. Well, if you would only be making 40 teeth gears, for example, uh, you could use it without any discs and uh, it would work just fine. Just put the lever on, the, on a known position uh, every time. But now, uh, um, then comes the nice part here. Uh, you can attach uh, dividing discs into this one. Uh, this device came with uh, three discs. They are one-sided, uh, so the other side is blank and the other side has holes. And uh, well, uh, there are different uh, discs uh, with different amount of, uh, amounts of holes. I'll uh, choose the disc which has uh, 19 holes uh, this time. Okay. Okay. It's there now. So now we have a disc there. <laughs> um, this can be used uh, for uh, dividing uh, with a different uh, number of uh, divisions. Uh, I will go to that uh, mathematics behind that later on. So now um, the next thing we will have here, if I can find it by feel, yeah, are these. Uh, these are actually not needed. <laughs> uh, th these are sector arms. Uh, these are actually not needed, but they are very convenient to have here. The places here, like that. 
And then there is a clip like that, which goes and holds them in place. And in this case, the clip is really flimsy, but it doesn't need to be that. So now they don't rotate by themselves. And the last thing you have to have here, <coughs> when you put it uh, together, you have to have the crank. You have to have it so that uh, this thing goes into the holes you need to use. Uh, they are in, uh, in concentric uh, circles here, the holes, different holes. I am choosing the 18 holes, uh, sorry, 19 holes uh, thing. And then you tighten this. And now again, this it's important that this is uh, tight because uh, it dictates uh, how this will turn. Okay. Now, uh, when you turn here, you can see the chuck is rotating. So you have to rotate it 40 times, 40 times really, and then this will rotate one turn. Okay. Uh, well, our division uh, will be such that uh, we will be using eight holes from this uh, uh, disc. And now these sector arms uh, come into play here. I will loosen that one so we can, we can move these sector arms uh, like this. We will be needing eight holes for each each teeth we are the division we are going to make and each uh, that so I will calculate here one two three four five six seven eight eight is there let's see now again let's calculate it again so you calculate it like one two three four five six, seven, and eight is the hiding behind. Let's see if it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. So now I tighten this really tightly so that it doesn't, uh, not really tight, but uh, tight enough so it doesn't move on me when I, when I do the division. So now, uh, when I want to move eight holes, <laughs> I just uh, pull this up and go to here. And I know you shouldn't do it like this, but I push it to the next hole, ensure that it is there. Okay. Uh, then this has moved uh, one hole. And this is a break. When you put it like this, it uh, freezes this, it doesn't uh, rotate. When you move one hole, uh, well, if you look here, there is about one degree of backslash in this one. And uh, you should always uh, uh, compensate or uh, take away that backslash. So uh, some, uh, some people, some uh, have presented this in a way that you when you go here to the next hole, you don't, uh, you always go to that hole and th then uh, this like uh, turns and it stops there. Well, that's one, one way. But if you go past that hole like that, it's no use of uh, just coming back because this doesn't move back right away. There is this backslash. So you have to go back all the way and then come back to the hole. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Uh, well, a better way for me at least. Uh, it's not, um, well, uh, it depends uh, who you are. <laughs> so it's just to put it into that hole, whichever wiggling you want to have. And after that, manually, take away the backslash here, and then tighten the brake. Uh, that's how I do it. It's uh, way easier and you don't need to be so careful when you move this. 
and when you have moved uh, like eight uh, holes you just move this sector arms here so you have your next eight holes waiting for you here this is now about uh, the dividing head uh, the next will be the tailstock <coughs> Now, uh, this here is the chuck that came uh, with that uh, dividing head. Well, if you have uh, bought a Chinese knockout, you have uh, most probably a chuck like this. And yeah, uh, well, uh, I have, uh, this has, <laughs> you, you can tilt this and have it each and every way. Uh, I have uh, made it so that uh, uh, the height of this tip is on the height of uh, the se rotational center point of uh, this dividing head. So uh, uh, it's a pain in the ass to adjust, really it is. So uh, I made it once and then I left it alone. <laughs> Uh, it took me about, uh, well, a long time to do that, because it's it's not easy to do. So now, uh, when they are bolted into the table, they are on the correct height here. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> and uh, you are supposed to have your workpiece in between here. Well, the thing with uh, this uh, uh, tailstock is that you, you can... Uh, push that thing out from there and pull it back, yeah. Uh, so when you, uh, when, when I uh, set my workpiece here, I will first not use the chuck at all, uh, the tailstock. I will uh, uh, attach my workpiece into here, dial it in in a way that it is concentric. Uh, well, it's a for your chuck, you can do that. And when it's concentric, then I uh, take this and put it against the uh, center hole in my workpiece and uh, then tighten it lightly into the table, lightly. And then I push this a little bit and it uh, self-aligns itself into the hole. And then I tighten it firmly into the table, tighten it firmly against the chuck and uh, then I use this lock screw here <laughs> uh, with this key I just tighten this so that it doesn't move any more and uh, then you are ready to go well that's about the tailstock next uh, will be gear specific it will be the uh, module gear cutters and that uh, will be a lot of uh, well, not a lot of, uh, some tear. Well, <laughs> gear cutters, involute gear cutters. Well, here you have uh, three uh, sets of them. These cutters uh, always come in uh, sets of eight. Well, uh, there is a reason for that. And uh, so these tiny ones here, these are module 0 0.5 cutters. These medium sized are module 1. And these large one, larger ones, uh, of course there are even larger than these. These are module 2 cutters. Uh, we are, today we are going to use the module 2 cutters. And since they are so big, I can also show you things with those. It's easier to show when uh, you don't have to use a microscope. <laughs> so, let's put those other cutters away. So now, uh, well, as I said, though these come in sets of eight. Uh, these are numbered. And the number of cutter uh, depends uh, on uh, the number of teeth you are going to cut on your gear. So uh, there is one, uh, the, well, the numbering systems are uh, different. 
And if you look at this, you can probably see that the profile is different on each cutter. So uh, number eight is used for uh, gear rack from uh, some number of teeth uh, up to the infinity. So that one is, uh, uh, well, you have numbers on these. This is number seven, which we are actually going to use today. And this one is number one. And it has a profile like that. And now if I assume that here in the bottom we have the number eight. Yes. So if you look at it, uh, number eight should have straight flanks here. It should. Actually, the infinite uh, gear rack has a straight uh, 40 degree, so 20 degree uh, ang touching angle, pressure angle, whatever that is. And if you look at uh, these two cutters, this is one and this is eight. So you can see a definite uh, difference between those. You can also see that this is thicker than this. This is because the profile requires uh, a thicker cutter. Uh, this is so, this was number one and this was number eight. Yeah, neither of ones which are go we are going to use today. It's number seven. <laughs> And uh, this one is because uh, 95 is in the range of this cutter. Um, uh, well, let's see one. Uh, I have one uh, very nice book, uh, which is a German book, which is uh, explaining uh, this quite well. Uh, well, it doesn't have the numbering uh, of those. Uh, this is because um, the numbering depends on uh, manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it can be forward or reverse numbering, uh, depending. Uh, wait a minute. Here is the book. And uh, this is Technische uh, Formel Sammlung. <laughs> well, Technische uh, Formel Sammlung. It's, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, what's the age? 74, very suitably aged book, and I have here suitably this uh, on a correct place. And here I have uh, the numbering of the uh, of the um, uh, cutters. Uh, so with number one cutter, you can do from 12 to 13 teeth. Yeah. <laughs> And let's take number five, which is from 26 to 34 teeth. Yeah. And now this seven. Remember, we are making a... Well, uh, you cannot remember it. Uh, well, we are going to make a gear with uh, 95 teeth. So now if you look, uh, it's on the range here. Uh, so that is the reason why we are using cutter number seven. So... Uh, <coughs> Uh, yeah, uh, they have a uh, number of these because the, tra the gear profile changes uh, uh, when uh, you have different number of teeth. Yeah, okay. So, and uh, well, that's uh, one thing. You have to choose the correct cutter when you are do making your gears. Then, uh, when you uh, uh, make your gears, there are one other thing that you need to worry about and it is the cutting depth or teeth height. <laughs> in a module system uh, this is really easy. Uh, here in the book uh, it's about uh, there, where my finger is now. Uh, there is uh, module 1 teeth height. <laughs> well, it's very simple. You just take that figure and uh, multiply it by the module value and there is your cutting depth. For example, uh, this one, uh, it will be 2.166 multiplied by 2, because this is uh, uh, module 2. Uh, 
How easy can that be? Uh, well, yeah. Okay. So then we know uh, that uh, uh, we are cutting the correct uh, height for the teeth. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how this American system is. This uh, teeth per per whatever it is. <laughs> it's a cumbersome system which I don't like at all. <laughs> Uh, I uh, use the module cutters because I'm an European <laughs> metric guy. <laughs> and uh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, so this is the cutter we are going to use, and the cutting depth we already know it. Yeah, okay. Uh, just a little bit of uh, calculation from this book, and uh, well. Uh, Next, I would like to talk about attaching uh, these to something. Uh, well, there is a key slot here. Well, I don't like to use the key slot because if this does something horrible, and if you had the key there, it it will uh, most certainly destroy something, and that that that's. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, well, <laughs> I made uh, a thing like this. And this one is uh, Mandrel or Mandrel? Well, it's a, a, a thing where you can attach uh, these uh, teeth, these cutters. And uh, well, now you need to take uh, in account the direct rotation direction here. Oh, well, I will explain you why. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, the system is such that uh, uh, this here is exactly a match with that hole. And of course I put it the correct way because I know. And there it is. It's a uh, it's quite concentric. Then I have a bushing like this, which goes, first of all, into this holes, hole quite accurately. It's uh, quite a tight fit there. And then we have, it's also quite a tight fit here. This is what makes it uh, concentric uh, with this uh, holder, like that. And now we have, have the cutter here. And then I have this uh, bolt here, which I just put here, and tighten it here. And uh, did I already put it the wrong way around? Because now, when this rotates, it should... should uh, well, it's... Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, already. Uh, I have, uh, it has to be uh, the correct way around. So you have to think it in a way that uh, when you rotate it and it cuts, it will actually tighten this bolt while cutting. If you have it the wrong way around, it will loosen it. <laughs> And you will end up uh, end up your cutter falling away from the. Well, nothing bad happens actually. Well, now if you think that this is rotating uh, this way, how it is supposed to be cutting, it will tighten the screw. That's how I I think about the direction of this. And uh, it will uh, tighten itself when when you are you are cutting. Of course, you need to tighten it uh, somewhat at the beginning, uh, and uh, then there you go. And uh, well, uh, I have to say that this cutter, I made it for slitting saws, and it has proven to be very good tool, really. I recommend uh, making such a tool for yourself if you can. Well, that's one. Well, uh, <laughs> That's about the dividing heads and so on, and uh, now 
<coughs> there will be a little bit of uh, talk about uh, the uh, mathematics uh, um, associated with the division, divisions. Uh, that's also important. How did I come by to come to this uh, this uh, nineteen uh, whole disc that where you have to have uh, well eight <laughs> holes? Well, you can check it with your calculator like this. Uh, let's turn this on. Can you see it? Maybe. Uh, and uh, now if I... Uh, we have a 19 whole disk, so 19 times 40 equals 760. <laughs> okay, now uh, what this means that is that when uh, the chuck, the four jaw chuck, makes one full rotation, 760 holes have been passed by by the crank. Well, we are going to make a 95 uh, hole, uh, hole, 95 teeth gear. So it has to be divided into 95 parts, this uh, 760. So let's divide it. Divide it by 95 equals 8. <laughs> well, how did I come, by, come to this? Oh, well, uh, there is no direct uh, mathematics uh, on how you can uh, uh, come by to that. It's just, to me, it means that you have to... Um, uh, it's a trial and error, really. You can do something like uh, trying to uh, uh, minimize your your calculations, etc. But uh, I have developed uh, some sort of a guts feeling, uh, which would probably be the correct disk. Well, it's a little bit intuitive. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, now we know that it will be a 19-hole disk, and each teeth will be eight holes. So now let's set up this uh, milling machine. Well, I'm uh, on the side of my milling machine. This was a little bit different uh, setup for presenting this. Uh, well, hopefully you liked it. A very long in introduction for a simple, a really simple task to do. So, uh, well, next we will be milling the teeth. <laughs> or actually not the teeth, the gaps between the teeth. Okay, now, <laughs> well, uh, this here, this here is the uh, milling head. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, quite versatile, as you will soon see. Uh, first of all, we have uh, this uh, cutter here, which I would like to place there. And I always uh, wipe these clean before doing anything with those. So, I just try to get any chips in there. There seldom is chips. Uh, it's uh, really clean. So then just have this here. Then we have the draw bar which goes on top here. There you are. And then I tighten the bolt up here. And uh, <laughs> well, that's it. I put it here on place now because it's easier to do at this point when you will see it's actually impossible. Uh, it will be impossible to do later on. So, yeah, and this bolt here. It can be tightened now. It's tight. Okay, what next? Uh, I could uh, use this orientation for milling uh, this thing, but uh, 
Actually, I don't like that orientation because it doesn't give me the maximum rigidity of that this machine can, can give you. So I loosen these four bolts here. That one, and this one, and other one here, at the back somewhere, and yet another one. So four all together, like that. And now this here is an indexing mechanism, like that. Now you can rotate this like this, and uh, I will put it in a horizontal position. As you could see, it locks there. One more time. There. Uh, this one uh, here pulls a pin into, into this piece. Now there is a locking pin between those. Uh, and I will tighten these in place, uh, then retract the pin. I don't want it to be engaged here. And uh, then the rest. These don't need to be really tight. They lock this quite permanently into place and there is an additional support coming very soon. It's there. So, the indexing is uh, in uh, 15 degrees interval, so it's <laughs> very similar indexing uh, with the dividing head. So you can, and it's a dripping oil, yeah. Uh, this has a habit of uh, dripping oil every time I do this. Okay, the next thing. I have now positioned the, the table here. Here, you, the table you can see uh, in, in the midway. So, this here is a break for that, that one. And this here you can choose either rotating or, uh, or then uh, pulling. Uh, well, you see. Let's first rotate it. So, we, I would like to have it this direction. And here we also have an indexing mechanism. Now, it's, it's there. Okay, and then when I pull this, I can, and now I'm uh, looking here, here that the cutter is about, uh, well, I could take the next uh, slot here. So this here is the most rigid position. So if you can use that one, uh, very good. Well, let's see if I can use that. Well, not exactly, so I would like to give it a little bit, get it out that much. There you are. Uh, it's uh, just a matter of, uh, well, and now I can lock this in place. You never leave this actually locked. Uh, then you engage the brake. <coughs> And this engages the indexing system. This is such a thing that if something bad happens here, it will. That's the weak point of this machine, this indexing. And uh, if that breaks, uh, you are in ahead of uh, taking apart your machine and uh, setting up things there. So now it's locked on place. Uh, I can put this on free gear. <laughs> Now, uh, before we can uh, attach any workpiece here, uh, we need, of course, uh, to attach this one into the milling table. <laughs> well, uh, that's easy enough. Huh? Well, uh, first of all, I have chosen, uh, there are, I have four grooves here. When I align the cutter, I uh, the position the cutter, I was uh, looking at this groove so that it's uh, above this screw, so that I can align it easily there. So that will be our center point. And now what we have here is these. Uh, a little bit of a chat about these. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, 
There are two to types. Let me take one here. The type I don't like, and uh, that's you no. Know, and the type I really like. So this is the type I really don't like, and this is the type I really like. Okay, what's the difference? Can you see it? They are seemingly seemingly similar. This has round edges and everything. It's nice. Okay. Uh, well, the major difference is here in the bottom. Well, this one is the one I don't like, and this one is the one I like. Uh, the, if you we take the one that I don't like, and if you put this bolt into it, hopefully it now goes there. You can screw it right through, like this, yeah? And now if you think about it, if you, this would be sitting there on the crew and uh, you didn't notice, you tighten it, you can break your table with this, very easily, actually. So that's the reason why I don't like this type of T-nuts. Well, the T-nut I like, uh, it's a little bit rough, but uh, there is one thing, uh, you see those little notches here in the bottom, it stops there. You cannot go past that point. That's a good thing. Uh, this means that you cannot uh, break your table with this. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, just uh, tighten them even though they resist. Yeah. So let's put this on the groove here. I already had this one on the one I like. <laughs> there you are. Okay, now uh, I'll uh, put this here. That one goes there in the back. So we have now uh, the nuts uh, or the bolts in place. Uh, well. So how to straighten this up? Because I don't have uh, the key in the bottom. You could have a key in the bottom to straighten this. But I use this. This is a straight edge. Well, uh, well, I don't know what this is called, but you can use this to straighten it out. And this is accurate enough for our purpose. And then I recheck here that it is. And how I do this, I just look into the gap. That there is no gap there in between this and uh, the edge. And then let's tighten this one as well. And this should be quite firmly tightened. <coughs> That's tight. Then this one as well. It's tight. Okay, now we have that in place and uh, the next step is to uh, put our workpiece into that one. And uh, this is... Uh, I probably need to turn the jaws. Oh yeah, and this is also one benefit of a four jaw chuck. You can uh, turn your jaws. And I will uh, really place it very, very loosely here, so that it only, uh, well, supports it uh, even so slightly. I'm just aligning this uh, like uh, visually now. Uh, I, and uh, I will dial it here first. And when I get it about uh, running about through here, then I will uh, uh, finalize the dialing uh, with this surface here. So let me set up the dial indicator here. It uh, will be somewhat fun. Well, <clears throat> here I am straightening uh, this, uh, well, uh, dialing it uh, concentric. So, uh, well, uh, I have this uh, la rather large uh, dial indicator, but 
I used it because it has the reach. <laughs> well, uh, let's see now. I I'm looking for a minimum here first. Where is our minimum? So it is... Oh yeah, there, there, there. Well, uh, of course I already, of course I already did. Uh -huh. uh, the Y direction here, uh, you can, here you can see that you are on the top of the shaft by uh, searching for the maximum. So that is our minimum. So let's, that's now our zero. Uh, why I do this? I want to know how much do we have a deviation here. What's the maximum then? Seems to be 81 maybe. Oh, that doesn't help at all. 81, okay. Uh, divide it by 2. So it's 40.5. So 40.5 is... That's our zero point. Okay, now what I can do here is just to adjust the Z. Like this and bring this to zero like that. There you are. Okay. So now we need to uh, adjust uh, each pair of these screws into zero and this one looks like it already is. So if I tighten this even so slightly then I go to the opposite side. <laughs> well that's funny how much it deviates really here. Uh, you can see it went uh, past the zero yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. And the final. Tight. And now we drop the table a little bit, and not just a little bit, let's see how much we need to drop it. Maybe that's enough. So then I, I had uh, the x-axis locked here. So we can take this like that. Uh, that's the fun part of this. Uh, you can do this. And this might have a lot of deviation, but uh, let's see. It shouldn't actually. Let's see now. <laughs> it's uh, really straight, as you can see. No need to adjust this anymore. It's there. It is there. Well, uh, well, here we have a groove here uh, in this uh, tailstock. <laughs> I'm simply using it to visually align uh, this blade into that groove and uh, now, uh, well, I have already aligned it. And there it is. Next step uh, will be, I switched uh, this thing on, next step will be to set the correct uh, depth of cut. And this is, now let's see, uh, so of course I lock my Y direction at this point because I don't want it to move <laughs> anymore. Let's see now whether we have oh yeah okay uh, 
I think not there. And the speed here is, well, it's about correct. It's uh, 100 revolutions per minute. Let's see how it looks like. Well, looks uh, actually quite good. Maybe just a bit more. And then I touch uh, this surface, and the nice thing about touching these is that it makes a sound. Wow. There you are. You can hear it. Yeah. Then I pull it here, somewhere. Uh, well, yeah, uh, now I zero my z-axis dial here. Put it to zero and then uh, we need to lift the table uh, amount of cutting net. 2.166 times 2 equals 4.33. Let's take a safety distance here. 4.33. So that's 1.5, that's 3, that's now 4, and then 1, 2, 3 tenths, and 3 hundredths of a millimeter more, it's there. All we need is some rocco here. Well, let's see now. I will wipe some rocco here, not all the way, just uh, enough that, like that. I will add it while we go. Uh, I will cut the first teeth uh, feeding manually. Uh, Okay, let's go. Uh, I would well, this cutter is quite straight actually. It's cutting on e every teeth. Very straight. This is something I have uh, not met before. First, please. And that's the safe point. Well, what I see now is that uh, I need, because this has a magnet in it. Uh, well, uh, I need to cover the back surface with. <coughs> okay, now I have covered uh, the uh, back side of this uh, thing with. Uh, this orange tape and uh, well it's uh, I'm about to change to next uh, teeth here like that and then I do this and that and then it's on place
Well, I can hold four feathers. That's, that was really good. But now, next, Steve. Then I do this, and there we go again. Okay, uh, and the teeth uh, look uh, correct. So uh, I will uh, keep on doing this. Well, uh, 92 more times. <laughs> These are now uh, the last 18 teeth I need to mill. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty, pretty well off here now. So let's put some rock all here. There too. Uh, I need to change the teeth. And away we go. Yeah, okay. One thing that I, why I showed you the thumb R here, is because this, the next one would be on uh, my starting position. Uh, that's, uh, that means that my division was correct. I didn't make any mistakes with the divisions here. Well, I'm pretty sure I made some mis mistakes there somewhere, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but uh, yeah, so this is the last cap, so yeah, yo!
Well, let's uh, try something out. I will now advance to the next teeth, although it's not required. That's the next one. And uh, we have an empty slot there. Already milled. And now I feed this manually, and uh, I shouldn't uh, hear or feel anything here now. Well, a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Okay. We are ready with uh, milling uh, to teeth. Uh, oh, oh, man. So now, uh, just a little bit of a clean up here. Uh, vacuum cleaner is the best your friend in this case. bulk away from it. And now we can uh, lower the table down so we don't damage anything when I take it out from there. And uh, next uh, uh, will be a lot of uh, deburring. Uh, there is a horrific burr in this one. <laughs> okay, as you can see uh, the back side uh, is now where the most of the burr is. And now I'm uh, actually cutting it away. I'm peeling off something like uh, two hundredths of a millimeter from from that back surface. Uh, so um, it uh, should take the bull away. That's uh, my intention here. And uh, well, and, uh, this is now running something like uh, 70, 80 revolutions per minute. And the feed is uh, 0 0.038 millimeter so per revolution so it's very slow feed very slow speed and very thin cut but it won't be thin cut because uh, the, the bulls are really really proud here so this will be it can destroy the blade uh, I don't know let's see uh, this uh, will be a little bit exciting so here we go This looks really good. Okay, now next step is the wire, wire wheel and then we are done with this. Well, I'm about to burr, debur uh, this uh, flywheel. Now uh, all these uh, gaps have a burr inside them. Yeah, I took the mandrel away already. As you can see it, uh, it's a tapered mandrel and it worked really nicely. Well, when using this kind of a tool, well, uh, this is uh, mandatory. Uh, the reason is that uh, uh, those uh, steel pins uh, fly away. <laughs> they, they break and then uh, you get a, get a projectile. <laughs> uh, small projectiles, but they are really angry. So, let's see now. Um, I will uh, go through all the teeth and uh, you might see that we have a lot of uh, gunk there. So I start with this white spot here, so I know. Uh, now we go. And I'm running this really fast. It's something like 2000 uh, RPM. Yeah, and now we go. Where is the white spot? <laughs> There. So I know when I'm uh, through with this one. So let's go. Yeah, 
Oscar is our right spot. Done. And yeah, it looks, uh, well, it looks really nice. And it feels nice. Oh yeah, okay, done. That uh, was the last thing to do for this one. Flywheel for my friend. Uh, well, uh, it was quite easy. So, this about concludes uh, this uh, half uh, theoretic uh, episode of Window Greek Machining. Well, in the next episode, I really don't know at the moment what we are going to do, but I'm sure I will figure that out. So, uh, well, till then. Bye!